Hi, I'm Naisha McCauley, and you're watching AccessTV.org. Good morning, this is Jonathan Small, host and producer of All About You, and All About You is broadcast every single week live here at AccessTV.org studios in downtown Hartford. And All About You is a show that's designed to give my guests a chance to give their life story. This morning, I have as my guest a remarkable individual who has a tremendous model. It's not always how you get started, it's what you're doing and what you're doing in the future. And my guest this morning has come down to give her life story. My guest this morning is the president and CEO of Outreach Realty Services, LLC, located in New Haven, Connecticut, Roberta Husky. Good morning, Roberta. Good How you morning, doing? Good morning, Jonathan. Doing well. How are you? I'm doing fine to you. Good. It's a pleasure to have you down here pleasure this morning. Pleasure to be here. Oh, pleasure to be here. Okay. <laughs> Roberta, you was born and raised in New Haven, Connecticut? Yes. Born and raised in a great city of New Haven. <laughs> okay. Now, what was that like growing up in New Haven? Oh. Well, you know, we I grew up in what I'm not sure if they still call it projects, but mm -hmm. we grew up in what we called projects, which right. was subsidized housing, and um, it was a, a lot of my family lived there. It is kind of weird. As I started, I haven't written my book yet, but I started writing the book, mm -hmm. and as I began to write the book, I realized I had 22 members of my family that lived in this same public housing facility. Oh, so there was a, a very strong sense of community but a strong sense of family mm -hmm. um at that time but uh we all lived in poverty mm. and we didn't know at least as i didn't know that it was poverty i just knew that if we needed something we go next door yeah okay. <laughs> eat some sugar go ask the neighbor <laughs> right, right, all right. <laughs> but um i really love new haven mm -hmm. um it was it was definitely um not the model childhood. My dad left when uh, I think I was like six, six or I can't between six and eight. Mm -hmm. My my dad and my mom got divorced, so that definitely was um, took an impact. It was an impact on me as a young child. Um, I was a daddy's girl, still uh, in, you know, still I'm a daddy's girl. Okay. Um, mama's girl too. As yeah. well. but, um, but you know, it was very um, different. Mm -hmm. Um, when I when I say different, I mean from what my how my children are raised today and how I was raised, very different. Two bedroom apartment. Um, myself, I have um, three other brothers and sisters. I have a total of twelve brothers and sisters with my dad, mm -hmm. but m my mom and my dad have four of us. Um, my cousin lived with us. My aunt lived us, with us, and mm -hmm. um, we were in a little two bedroom apartment. You know, so it's very different the way. Um, we my children grow up in a way i grew up in um you know d poverty is something poverty well is something. well roberta it's almost like telling me right now that the way your children grew up you are more in a position to offer them things that you weren't able to be offered growing up or did at least just on a financial level would that be fair to say yeah yeah definitely okay without without a doubt mm -hmm. without a doubt and i always go i go back and forth though because I've always said when I grow up, I don't want my children. I want the best for my children. And, you know, my mother, I know she did the best for us that she can do. Mm -hmm. She even uh, went back to school uh, as a single mother being divorced with four children and uh, obtained a master's degree. Mm -hmm. So that was unheard of, I, you know, from from um, pushing that hard. So I, that was one of my first examples. But, um, yeah, my, my children don't really know what it's like and i go back and forth because there is lessons learned in a struggle mm -hmm. i think the best lessons are learned out of the struggle mm -hmm. and i didn't realize that you know i didn't realize that i am who i am because i came up the way i came up nothing was given to me you mm -hmm. know so um i think you know there's there's something to be said about the struggle well when you say struggle we're talking a multitude of struggles just one major struggle that kind of really affected your life i mean describe when you mentioned struggles what are we talking uh, about? we're talking about a multitude but the the one that i talk about a lot is being a teenager mm -hmm. and um ended up pregnant at 17. Mm -hmm. and um it was in the early 90s where our brown babies 
brown boys, you know, we were losing them and we still are today to the streets mm -hmm. and to being six feet under or into the jail cells. Mm -hmm. And so when I found myself pregnant at 17 and I found out I was having a male child, mm -hmm. I was scared to death because now life was not about me. Now life was about a young boy who was about to be birthed into this world to a teenage single mother. Mm -hmm. How, what what am I to do with him? Right. How do I protect him? My life is not about me. I'm not self. I couldn't be selfish. It wasn't about Roberta anymore. Mm -hmm. um, but 17, did, obviously didn't finish school at that time. Mm -hmm. um, had to go back and found myself on welfare. Mm -hmm. $417 a month. I will never forget it. Right. And even homeless. Mm. And when I think about, when you talk about a struggle and my son would talk about it today and he'll talk about all of those positive, um, those positive times he would have, or let's speak positive, let's speak life. He, you know, so how we got through these struggles. Mm -hmm. And um, let me tell you, if I could be just, just as candid, um, you know, I would have to say it's only because of God yes. in my life that I am still living here and I am still able, I'm here to be able to have this interview with you mm -hmm. and to use my life as an example that I don't care where you are. I don't care what struggles you have. I don't care what problems you have. They have not come to stay, but they have come to pass. Right. right. If you stay focused and keep your mind right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now growing up in New Haven, um, I'm pretty sure you weren't the only teenage mom mm -hmm. growing up mm -hmm. and I don't want I don't want to say negatively this is the norm, but certainly you you know more than one other probably individual that was similar or in the same situation oh, that you were. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And unfortunately, in that community, it was somewhat the norm. Mm. It's unfortunate. And um, and that again it, it speaks volumes to um to not understanding life mm -hmm. and the uh, um not being not really taking life seriously mm -hmm. until you're, you're put in these positions to do so. And unfortunately, some people prevail and some people fail. Well, that's my next question. You know, mm -hmm. what gave you the, the determination that you wanted more for your life and your son? You know, mm -hmm. you mentioned that he was going to be a male. Mm -hmm. I mean, because I guess the norm to some degree could always be you could remain on welfare, you could stay in the projects and just struggle and, you know, be on the system and, you know, focus, just function it on that level. Mm -hmm. Or you could make this as a motivationary uh, point to want a lot more for yourself and your child. Mm -hmm. But what was it that really got you started going in a different uh, direction? Well, I have to say it was at the point, my lowest point in my life. And that's mm -hmm. when I found myself in the shelter. Mm -hmm. It was my godparents, which who were pastors, um, who came and took me out the shelter and they took me into their home. Now, mm -hmm. mind you, I am a, a little brown girl from the hood. Right, right. That's all I am. Like I claim to be nothing more than that. Right. So when I was, when I was taking, when they, when they allowed me to come and stay with them, they lived in Bethany and mm -hmm. that's the suburbs. So you mean to tell me, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I go from, a t you know, this little, uh, maybe less than a thousand square feet uh -huh. um, apartment to this beautiful house. They had a bedroom with a bathroom in it. Right. I had never seen that. You uh -huh. have to understand. I've never seen that. A bedroom with a bathroom in it and a walk-in closet. Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> it's not like a mansion to you almost. <laughs> But it opened my eyes. Mm -hmm. And again, they were pastors. So what they said to me, and I'll never forget it. And they said it over and over and over and over again. You do not have to be a product of your environment. Right. It is up to you to, to change your life. And you can do exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask or even think. But it was according to the power that worked within you. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted it, you have to go after it. You can't be complacent, but you have to make up your mind. Right. And if you make up your mind, you take some steps. God gonna take those steps with you. And Lord, if he didn't do it. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> so that was obviously your turning point, you believe. Uh, you to think in a different uh, to direction. To think differently. Mm -hmm. It didn't happen immediately. Mm -hmm. 
but I had to think differently. It was out of hope. It was the hope, it was the audacity to hope that I can do something different, that I could break this poverty curse, the audacity to hope that I'm not going to be like everybody else in my family, 22 members in the a, in a project, the audacity to hope that I can be greater and I can leave a legacy to my children, the audacity to hope. Mm -hmm. I had it, still do, mm -hmm. still do. Well, there's a lot to your life that mm -hmm. obviously I want to be able to get into, mm -hmm. but at some point you left New Haven mm -hmm. and you was able to be exposed to a different world. Mm -hmm. um, we're up on our first break, but briefly, you know, at that point, did you realize that you really didn't want to go back to living in um, New Haven? No, I've always lived. I, li I live in the outskirts of New Haven. Okay. I worked, if, if you're referring to New York, uh -huh. I worked in New York. So I commuted back and forth. At that time, I was in West Haven. Mm -hmm. But I had, um, I made up my mind when I was a, when I was a teenager that this is what I wanted to do. The changing point in my life was my first real estate investment. Okay. Um, and that opened the other doors. And then I ended up at New York. Well, Roberta, we up on our first break. Let's get into, in the second part of your show, mm -hmm. your destination working in uh, New York, what mm -hmm. you had to go through to get to that stage. Mm -hmm. And I think people will still find it very remarkable how you was able to make this transition. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. This is Jonathan Small. I am enjoying hosting All About You this morning with my guest, president and CEO of Outreach Realty Services, LLC, located in New Haven, Connecticut, Roberta Hosky. Got to make sure I say that name um, correct. And we're going to come back very shortly with part two of All About You. Thank you. AccessTV.org. Stay tuned. loss of income, medical bills, car repairs. What does it mean to you and your family? A law firm is not about one person. It's about a well-coordinated, synchronized legal team that understands you and tells your story. I'm attorney Jeffrey Dressler for Dressler Strickland, injury lawyers. Hablamos su idioma, and this is what we do. 24-7-11-22. That's 24-7-11-22. Morning again. This is Jonathan Small. I am hosting All About You this morning with my guests, um, real estate. Uh, he sh actually she has a multitude of different um, positions, but obviously her company is Outreach Realty Services, located in New Haven, Connecticut. Roberta Husky, and we're going to come back with part two. Roberta, obviously you mentioned earlier in the program uh, about your real estate company and your real estate uh, career. Was that kind of a starting point to you getting into the mainstream um, economy? Um, absolutely. And mm -hmm. I, I, the first investment that I made was a uh, four family house, purchased it for $88,000. But my only thought process again goes back to my son because mm -hmm. I didn't want him to live in subsidized housing anymore. And we did at one point. Mm -hmm. um, but it just made sense for me because I, if I purchased this house for $88,000, the mortgage was $1,100. I was able to rent the third floor out for $1,100. Mm -hmm. We lived on the second floor and we didn't have to pay a mortgage or rent right. for that matter. I had two other apartments on the first floor, $900 and $600 that we had per month. So I had a cash flow of $1,500 a month after having the mortgage paid and I did absolutely nothing mm -hmm. to of, other than the initial investment. Um, and I didn't have to 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 get up and go to work. My mortgage would still be paid, and I still have money coming in. Yes. But my thought process was not about real estate investing. It was just what made financial sense. Right. And when I figured out what was going on with real estate, which I've always had a love for, my house was worth three hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars. So I don't have to tell you I cashed in, right? Right. Right. One of the biggest checks that I've had, and I didn't go to work for it. Mm -hmm. I when I tallied up all the money I made off this one investment was over a quarter of a million dollars. Mm. One real estate investment. 
Yes. But at that time, I was commuting back and forth, and I was working. I worked. I went through the Yale's home buyer, Yale home buyer program. Mm-hmm. Um, but then I took the position to New York, um, and I commuted back mm-hmm. and forth, and I had a fabulous job. Um, was the chief administrator of pediatrics um, research at Albert Einstein College of Medicine. Mm-hmm. A really good paying job mm-hmm. and uh, had a show so good. I had a chauffeur that oh. if I worked late, they yes. would bring me from the office all the way home oh, to okay. my doorstep. So fabulous job. And um, but it just felt like there was more to me than this job. Mm-hmm. And it was more to me than than just money. And when I realized what I wanted to do, I, I, um, it took a lot, Mm -hmm. (laughs) but I realized that I wanted to start a real estate company. Mm -hmm. And in order for me to do that, I needed to make some radical changes, Okay, (laughs) uncomfortable changes. Uh And my grandmother, I'll never forget when I told her that I wanted to, um, to start my own company. She begged me, she was like, please please keep this job, Uh keep this job. But I knew for me, it was something I had to do. So I was crazy and jumped off the cliff Mm -hmm. and left this six figure Mm -hmm. job with a chauffeur to start a company in my basement with one telephone with two rings, Mm -hmm. a ring that would have a special ring for a fax and another ring that I would know I would have to run to the basement and say, I'll reach property management. How can I help you? Uh-huh. As if I had a company office, but right. this is in my basement. Mm-hmm. So despise not small beginnings. And you know, that was, that was, that was big. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that was big. That well, was big. You know, we talked a little bit off of the air and I think the comparison, um, you really look up to Oprah oh, yeah. Winfrey, but I suggested, I think the comparison with your life is very similar to Kathy Hughes, mm-hmm. who's a mogul and owner of TV or well, radio one TV one mm-hmm. in Silver Springs of Maryland. She was a teenage mother. Mm-hmm. She had to struggle to get home business going. And so mm-hmm. it's a long, long story, yeah. but the base of it is the similarities of two teenage mothers. She grew up in poverty. Mm-hmm. She has some issues dealing with, you know, making her life better. It's a lot similar to your life, mm-hmm. but the one difference I would say to a lot of the people growing up in your hometown, who might still have a lot of adversity is that you are more closer to their age. You're closer geographically to where they live at. Mm -hmm. Uh, This is not to take anything away from Kathy Hughes, but Kathy Hughes is is older now and she's at a much higher, higher level, Mm -hmm. you know, and you're at a high level too. Mm -hmm. But I think the younger people who have similarities growing up as, you know, Mm African-American, you know, women can say, if I'm a teenage mother, I don't have to be another statistic. I think you could be a perfect example. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to say that on the air. No, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, But again, what you say this position that you had in New York Mm -hmm. was, you know, a high paying job. Mm -hmm. Was it your education that kind of led you to this position? Well, I, um, I went to Gateway. I'm actually, you know, I'm on the Gateway Foundation's board right now, and I'm also in Gateway's Hall of Fame. Uh-huh. So I got my associate's degree there, and then I went to further my education at Quinnipiac uh, University. But to answer your question, it was more of my experience in Yale that got me the position in New York. Mm-hmm. Because what happened is the department, um, one of the faculty members at Yale became the chairperson of the pediatric department at Albert Einstein. And I used to manage his grants for him. And he asked if I can go along with him when he made that transition. So that's how I ended up in New York. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. And did you enjoy that life experience when you was working in uh, New York? Oh, I love it. Okay. Love it, love it. It, uh-huh. it was it was a very, um, I, I love that experience, but it was, the commute was challenging because at this time I, you know, had, my my babies are babies and i'm yeah. going back and forth to new york right yeah <laughs> so <laughs> challenging was well, that somewhat of your part of your decision to say that i may not really want to continue working in new york also your children too mm-hmm. yeah i made a two-year commitment okay and um i was uh, at the two-year time where i had to decide if i was going to stay if i was going to go or what I, what my next steps were but i looked at my children and i and i looked at at the time my daughter was was born and I missed her walking. Uh-huh. So I'm like, wait a second. Right. When did this happen? While I was on the train? 
Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it goes, it went by fast. So, yeah. Uh-huh. So as a mother, I'm a mom first. Uh-huh. So, you know, it wasn't about the money. It was about really fulfilling what I believe I had to do and, and um, not chase the money. And I, that's been about, I'm not going to be a person that chase money. Money will chase me. Right, right. I, mm-hmm. I've heard that say it too. Mm-hmm. Um, Roberta, do your family members and your friends that you grew up to, if you still interact with them, how do they view you? I absolutely do. I'm still in New Haven. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I mean, my family's my family. They'll right. always be my family. You right, know, there's, right. there, I don't think there's no difference mm-hmm. um, with my family, except some are, you know, very supportive. Mm-hmm. But you know, my family's my family, mm-hmm. and my friends are my friends. Okay. I mean, the people we went to school with, we went to school with. The people I hung yeah. out with, I hung out with. Right, I'm no right. different. Right. But you ask, how do they view me? I have had a number of them. Um, come and ask, how did I do it? Mm-hmm. And um, really have been in awe mm-hmm. of the transition in my life. And that is one of the reasons why I'm passionate about training mm-hmm. and showing people what I really did. Right. Um, it's, it's, it's no, to me, it's no secret. Uh-huh. It's no secret about changing your life and the power to change your life. Well, Roberta, I'm kind of glad that the friends that you mentioned uh, asked you that question because sometime when the friends you grew up with and y'all struggled and, you know, you were struggling to get to the next level, mm-hmm. sometimes there's a lot of jealousy that when they see somebody have something and they're not able to obtain it, they kind of almost resent you, the fact that you got it and I can't get it. Mm-hmm. But at least in this sense, they kind of asked you, you know, how, do, how was you able to get to where you are at and how can I get to that level? Well, I didn't say I didn't have haters. Okay, so you do have some haters then. All <laughs> I mean, right. Listen, everyone's going to have, if they're not hating, now you're not doing anything. <laughs> right, right. Okay, so you do have experience with that level too. Yeah, but I choose not to focus on them. I agree I'm with that. not giving them my energy. I agree with that yeah, 100%. Yeah. But I, you know, I love outweighs all of the hate, so I'll just focus on the love. Uh huh. <laughs> and let me ask you this other question: You don't yeah. seem like you forget where you come from, neither. Oh, absolutely not. Okay. If, absolutely not. I am a little brown girl from the hood. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, it comes across, you know, to do that. Yeah. Sometimes old saying, you know, you can take the person out of the hood, but you can't take the hood out of the person. That is true. Mm-hmm. And you, what you learn as you mature is you know how to turn it out off and you know how to turn it on. Right, right. That's true. <laughs> There's a time and place for everything. For everything, yes. Uh-huh. So, yeah. And again, your children must be tremendously proud of you. You've been able to show them a different level of yeah. exposure yeah. that unfortunately you weren't able to always see, uh, at least in your early part of you growing up. Uh-huh. And again, if you had your life do do over, would you change anything? Not one thing. Mm-hmm. Not one thing. Not one tear. Not one struggle. Mm-hmm. Not one frustration. Not one thing. Mm-hmm. Not mm-hmm. one. Okay. Mm-mm. And also, your business is somewhat of a family business. You have members of your family working mm-hmm. in your business. Yeah, my sister helped me start the business. She was crazy enough to believe that we could start this business, and she was one that helped me start it in the basement. Oh, okay. And I would go pick her up and we would go in my basement and start working. So she helped me. She's now in Charlotte, North Carolina, now Tamika Hosky. Uh-huh. Um, and she works in mortgage, the mortgage industry. My brother, um, Emmanuel, is still with the company as well. So, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, and also- we work together well as family. Yeah. You know how they say family can't work together? No. We, we're fabulous. We work very well together. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great feeling to realize that your family could still work together mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. be one family at the end of the day. Yeah. We're up on our second break. There's more to your life that I think people are going to find very interesting. There's mm-hmm. a lot about what you're doing in the community, what mm-hmm. you're doing with your businesses. You have other different multitude of um, choices that you're able to do beyond mm-hmm. just one level. And I want mm-hmm. people to also hear about that side of your life, too. Okay. All right. This is our Jonathan Small. Again, I am enjoying hosting All About You this morning with my guest, president and CEO of Outreach Realty Services, LLC, located in New Haven, Connecticut, Roberta Husky. And we're going to come back with our last part segment of All About You. Thank you.
Good morning again. This is Jonathan Small. I am hosting All About You this morning with my guest, the president and CEO of Outreach Realty Services, LLC, located in New Haven, Connecticut, Roberta Husky. And we're going to finish up our last segment. Roberta, obviously, you are very successful. Um, you have your career. You have um, many other different businesses that people may not be aware of. Um, is there anything else that people are not aware of beyond your outreach realty services uh, company that you are engaging in that you want to talk about? Um, sure. The other company that I have is Outreach School of Real Estate. So I created a real estate school. We uh, we are licensed in the state of Connecticut with 11 other reciprocal states. So we are uh, training people, certifying them to become real estate professionals. Mm -hmm. Uh, I also have a development company, RH Development is um, my company, and that's where we do real estate development. Mm -hmm. uh, we take properties, we rehab those properties, we put um, different programs in the properties, and also working on um, right now building a, um, a affordable housing unit um, that will also help, uh, that will house elderly. So we're working on that development. Mm -hmm. um, I'm having fun with um, my online um, school, mm -hmm. strategic real estate investing online, and um, and my new um, my new stage name, Miss Millionaire Mindset. All right, Miss Millionaire Mindset. <laughs> well, okay. that's that's my stage name, my alter ego. Uh -huh. um, but that is that Miss Millionaire Mindset brand is is def is taking um, what I've learned and and what have gotten me to this level in my life and i got so much more to go i'm just i'm a little baby yes but so much more to in my life to to go but to make the transition from being a homeless 17 year old teenager mm -hmm. welfare going to see apartments i couldn't afford to owning a company that has housed over four thousand people mm -hmm. you, you that's when you think about that alone, it's like, oh my gosh. Right. And um, I didn't look at it like that until people started asking me. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what, why do they keep asking me? How do I do it? How do I do what? Right. And then when I took a step back and really looked at it, I was like, you know what? This is something. And so if I am able to do it, other people are able to do it. And so um, I want to train as many people who want to be trained or who think that they can, um, who have a desire to break that poverty curse. And that's what I call it. I believe it's a curse mm -hmm. um, to break that poverty curse over their life and not just for themselves, but for their, their children. Right. And um, so Miss Millionaire Mindset, and I always says it goes back to the way you think, because before you make any action, you think. Mm -hmm. So if you think inappropriate, you act inappropriate. Yes. But if you think appropriate, you act appropriate. If you think inferior, you act inferior. If mm -hmm. you think that you're able to do something, you are able to do something. If you think you're not able to do it, you're not. Either way, you're right. Mm -hmm. But you're, it all starts with your thought process. Mm -hmm. And that's where we talk about the millionaire mindset. Mm -hmm. um, of course, it's infused with faith. Yes. And um, so the Miss Millionaire Mindset is a, listen to this, mm -hmm. is a faith based wealth creation company okay so that is what i believe you know that's one of my passions right now is is the miss millionaire mindset and do seminars and motivational speaking and training and training as many people as i can to to really apply what what god already gave them inside them to really be successful and find out um what they can do what's their mark in this world Roberta, is most of your businesses and your shows uh, located in New Haven or are they in different other parts of the state? Um, the real estate company and the real estate school, um, they're, they're in New Haven. Mm -hmm. The talk show that I'm working um, on, um, Making Better Sense with Roberta, um, that we record in Middletown. Okay. Um, and CT Moneymakers, which is my reality show. Uh -huh. All right. Into the reality <laughs> Having game. fun is not the drama reality, but it does that. It's reality, so you have to have drama. Right. So, okay. But it's good drama because in the end, it's still about training. Uh -huh. So in the end, you know, we t we showcase um, individual people and show them how investing in real estate or investing in their community can make a big difference in their life. Just at everyday people. So I want to give everything away about the the reality show, but it is gonna be great. It comes out um, in 2016, mm -hmm. and um, it's looking like it's gonna be on Channel Three. And where is that going to be filmed at again? We 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 filmed that um, 
in multiple locations, but mm -hmm. uh, New Haven. New Haven, okay. New Haven, majority is New Haven. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Does that kind of make you feel a little extra special to be able to have a lot of your businesses located in your hometown? Haven? Abs absolutely. You give back. You got to give back. You got to uh -huh. give back to your community. Mm -hmm. You have to give back. Because without my community, if they didn't support me, who would I be? Right. So a lot of people lose touch of that. You know, you think you're, you, you, you get to a certain point and then you don't need the people who helped you. Right. Yeah, I wouldn't have anybody putting housing if it wasn't for my community. Community, yeah. Yeah, I'm never lose sight of that. Uh -huh. And you reside uh, in Hamden, Connecticut, which mm -hmm. is actually outside of um, New Haven. Yeah, like ten minutes. Ten minutes, yeah. okay. Yeah, that's to, it. To do that. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a lot uh, to your life. I know you mentioned about Oprah Winfrey. I mean, mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised in the very near future if I see you on CBS uh, being interviewed by Gail King because she <laughs> came from Connecticut. You know, oh, I didn't local know Gail King. Connecticut. Well, technically, she wasn't born here, but okay. she used to work for WFSB. Oh, uh, which is Channel, Channel 3. 3. Right, right. Okay. And, I, and I know you've done interview <laughs> segments at Channel 3. Yes, yeah. And yes. she's now in New York um, as the lead or co-lead anchor. So it wouldn't surprise me in the very near future because you're a very young woman and you mm -hmm. have a lot of um, energy. And it seems like to me there's still a lot more to your life that you so want much. to um, pursue. Yeah. And uh, do that. I am... I'm not afraid, but I'm almost afraid because I don't know what the future holds, mm -hmm. but I know it's big. Right. I know that. I don't I don't know what it is, but I know it's big. And plus again, <laughs> you mentioned your model is, you know, you're not chasing the money, let the money um chase you. So Yeah. It, it, I mean, it must be a good feeling to be able to make a profit and do something that you enjoy doing but also to be able to help people along the way. Because when you talk about housing and real estate, everybody needs a nice, decent place to live. Yeah, you know what? I think that if, if we, I think that understanding your purpose, mm. when you get an understanding of who you are and why you are and why you're put on this earth, oh, yeah. then you're able to walk and things that you do will become prosperous because you're in line mm. with your purpose. Right. That is what I think a lot of us are missing. We are just, we're here. Mm -hmm. we're, we, we got a job, but the job is not who we are. Mm -hmm. Who are you? Right. You know, so when you get in tune with that, that's when the world becomes um, becomes a playground, so to speak, for mm -hmm. you. Um, I believe that you have to, what you do for others is what you do for yourself. Mm -hmm. And I live a model that life is not even about me. Mm -hmm. Everything I've done in my life has nothing to do with me. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Housing has nothing to do with me. It's about the person who needed housing. Yes. The real estate school has nothing to do with me. It's about the person who needed education. Mm -hmm. The Miss Millionaire mindset has nothing to do with me. It's the person who's looking for financial freedom. Mm -hmm. the, the investment for my first house had nothing to do with me. It had to do with my son. Right. So my life is not about me. Mm -hmm. It is about everybody else and what you can do for others. Because when it's all said and done, mm -hmm. there's going to be two dashes on this stone. And thank God I'm in perfect health. Right. But it's a day of birth, a dash, and a day of death. And the only thing that matters is that dash. What impact have you left in this world? Mm -hmm. And that is how I live my life. It's not even about me. Mm -hmm. And that is the not so secret of success. All right, all right. Mm -hmm. And again, there's a lot more that you are looking to pursue, but mm -hmm. uh, you have everything that you're doing in perspective, mm -hmm. as you just mentioned. Mm -hmm. And, you know, with your company and if there ever comes a time that you want to get involved in something else, mm -hmm. would you take that step? You know, do something totally different than what you're doing now. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I am a serial entrepreneur. If it makes sense and it is in line with my purpose, I will do it. Mm. People, you, people may say, "How do? Why would you want to do a talk show or a reality show? You're a real estate. You have a real estate company. Mm. Those are two different um, companies. Or now, why do you want to be a motivational speaker? And why do you want to? And actually, I actually have a um, agenda, and I'm I'm traveling at the end of this month to Virginia, mm. and I'm speaking. I'm holding Miss Millionaire Mindset conferences that are being sold out. Right. So. Um, that is different from where I came from. Mm -hmm. But that I think is a big problem in society. See, society puts, don't get me started. Okay. <laughs> because society puts us in these boxes and they like to define us to one thing. Mm -hmm. the, in, they say, oh, what do you do for a living? Oh, I'm an accountant, or oh, I'm a doctor, or oh, I'm a teacher. Well, you know what, you're much more than that. Mm -hmm. And that is a problem for me. When people say, what do you do for a living? I go on overload. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. Because I'm not one thing right. and neither are you. Mm -hmm. Neither are you. And society likes to put us in those little nice little night little little packages. Right. Yeah. Who are you? Mm -hmm. well, you know what? You can't define if I can't define me, you can't either. Mm. Right. <laughs> Now, uh, Roberta, your business is, uh, well, at least your real estate business mm -hmm. is located on Whaley Avenue. Yes, it's located at 390 Whaley Avenue uh, in New Haven, Connecticut, mm -hmm. on the corner of Whaley and Norton Street. Uh, Whaley and Norton Street. We have helped first time home buyers. Um, we have a tenant placement department. If you're an investor looking for tenants to be placed, we have that um, as, as well in our real estate company. But and also, if you find yourself um, facing foreclosure or need a short sell, um, we have that to help people um, with real estate. So um, we're, we're here to service all your real estate needs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, is there anything else that you would like people to know about your life before we end this program? I think we covered a lot, but is there anything else that you think is real important that you want people to know? I think it's real important that the takeaway is my life was turned upside down and then turned back around. So it can be an example. Mm. And if I am able to break a poverty curse, then so can anyone else. Mm. I'm no different from anyone else. The key is knowing who you are, who you are, and why you are. Mm. And when you get that answer, then there's nothing in this world that you cannot accomplish. And the only limits that this world has is the limits that you put on it yourself mm -hmm. and you put those limits on your mindset um i encourage the viewers to visit me at roberta hosky.com mm -hmm. r-o-b-e-r-t-a h-o-s-k-i-e roberta hosky.com mm -hmm. and there is where i have my trainings and where my seminars will be um i in, invite them all to um you know follow me roberta hosky.com i'm also on facebook roberta hosky miss millionaire mindset roberta hosky mm -hmm. yeah well, Roberta, it was a pleasure to have you on this morning. Uh, one of the luxuries that I do have is I have a second show that mm -hmm. deals with issues face to face. Mm -hmm. And it seemed like to me at some point in the future, I would love to invite you to be a guest on that show. Just to talk about, you know, real estate, finance, yeah. business the world. Because I think it's very important that people realize that you should put yourself in a position to have more than one option or alternative to make an income because nothing in life is guaranteed nothing in life is promised mm -hmm. but the way the economy is today um to lock yourself into just having one source of income one way of making money mm -hmm. and you're not flexible enough to be in a position to have other alternatives mm -hmm. could really be towards your detrimental at some point absolutely and i think face to face could be a good show to talk about issues on that level mm -hmm. and hopefully you're not so busy that you can come back up to Harvard, okay. but we'll it's definitely scheduling. keep that scheduling. Okay. Multiple streams of income. All right. Have that. Okay. Well, again, Roberta, it was a pleasure to have you on Same all here. about you this morning. I wish you and your family the best of luck in Thank the very you. near future. You're not actually that far. You're in New Haven. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is in located in Hartford, so we're not mm -hmm. that far mm -hmm. away uh, technically. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, this is Jonathan Small. I had enjoyed hosting All About You this morning with my guest, the president, CEO of Outreach Realty Services, LLC, Roberta Hosky. And she has a lot of other different businesses. She's in the media level, so definitely tune in for her with her radio show that she co-hosts along with her up-and-coming reality show and her real estate TV show. She's a multitude of different levels that she is participating in. Um, Again, there's always a lot of good programs you could always tune into on accesstv.org. There's a lot of issues going on throughout the week that you could always still look at on accesstv.org uh, network. Uh, hopefully this up and coming Monday, uh, you will be seeing me on face to face. There's some major issues going on here in the capital city. So we might be doing a couple, uh, if I could talk my owner, uh, the owner of the network into doing a special um, face to face uh, sometime to deal with you know, some major development news that's going on here in the capital city of Hartford. But if not, just look forward to seeing me. This will be coming Monday on Face to Face. And you know my last two phases by now. For people out there, have a very blessed day and keep the faith. Thank you.